Welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Room and today we're looking at our Blender Motion Graphics tutorial and we are on Blender 2.8 yes this is the first tutorial from the Golden Ribbon on Blender 2.8 we finally made it so let's commence the name of the tutorial is the fluid field infographic tutorial and this is an interesting tutorial it covers some covers a good vast of, of topics on the blender we're going to be looking at add-ons a specific add-on we're going to be looking at the dry looking at the drivers we're going to be looking at the wave modifier the boolean modifier you know and um, these are all very kind of high topics so let's go ahead and get straight into it so the first thing I want to do is have this add-on you can find the add-on um, let me just drag this add-on right here in front of you um, it's by Leon Moon Studios I'll leave the link in the description and just gonna go to the downloads here on the left and download this add-on it is free to download good and this is a text counter add-on which you saw you know on the in the preview Good. so once we have that downloaded and saved to a particular point on your file system we're going to go into file or edit sorry preferences and at the top here you're going to see install and so we're going to install and it's going to open up a file menu and wherever you've saved this file menu you're going to go there and um, access it i'm on ubuntu so this my file menus may look different from yours but you're gonna go to where it is and open it. You know, I have mine here stored already and it, yours will come in a zip, so you'll have to extract it, I think. I don't think Blender will read the, the zip version. If it does, then good. If it doesn't, then you'll have to extract it and you'll see Lemon textcounter.py for Python extension and you just go ahead and install that add-on. Mine's installed already. See the install button down here? Mine's installed already, so I won't be installing it. You know for this tutorial and just go ahead and do it once you've installed it you'll have to activate it so you'll have to search for text counter and I just type in text and you'll see animation.leomu.textcounter make sure you click make sure you tick this and if you want it to remain for your for any other um, install you can go into your left hand corner with this burger menu down here and you can have save preferences good so once you have this add-on installed, we can move on to the next step. So we're going to go ahead and set up the scene. I'm going to delete the def default cube with the delete key on my keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and press 7. Good. And that's the num that's the numpad 7. Then we're going to go ahead and control alt and 0. We're going to set the camera to this. Good. By default, we have the resolution as 1920 by 1080. That's full HD. So now that we have the full HD right here, we're going to go ahead and make a plane. Um, I hit Shift and A to make a plane. Or you can go to your Add up in the top or left hand corner. Right? Um, and then you select what you need to select here. So I'm going to go Shift and A. We want a mesh and a plane. And we're just going to press S. And then use our mouse to just pull up or pull down rather and that will scale this up then i'm pressing tab to go into edit mode i'm using the mouse button to select these two or you can use box select to select these and box select is b then we press g and x and that will grab these two points and we're going to just pull them to the left good i'm going to select these two points on the right hand side press g and x and just drag them over Good, and then that will make our plane. Good. G and X. Let's move it to the side. We're going to duplicate it with Shift and D, G and Z to push it down. Let's go ahead and just pan out with the middle mouse button so we can see what we're doing. We duplicate with Shift and D, and we press G and Z to bring it down a bit. So we have two planes here. I'm going to go ahead and color these planes. So we're going to go into our materials tab on our right hand side. And that's right here. I'm going to go new. And in our materials section right here. Oh, in our use notes, we're going to use notes. And under use notes, we're going to go where you have principal BSDF. We're going to change that to emission. 
good and then we're going to give it a color in our hex I have this color set down already for the background and it's a nice plum and it's C8377 one ff good and that gives me this nice plum and then on the bottom good we're just gonna have a new material also make this emission also and use nodes this one i'm not so bothered about let's just make it a dark blue good and let's so I'll just bring it down a bit right so we have a dark blue so this is a purple and this is a dark blue oh didn't set the emission for this let's go again make it a dark blue good all right awesome so we have the purple and we have the dark blue great so if we go ahead into the material options the view options viewpoint shading and we go to 3d view we can see that the bottom plane is dark blue and the top is a nice plum Good. so press U to go back into camera mode and we're going to go and make a hole in the first in the top plane so we're going to go and hit shift and A to go to our select mode or add mode and we're going to add a cylinder good now in the bottom left you're going to see add cylinder here the options and we're going to add that make that 64 good and then we're just going to click out of this Good. And now we want to center this in the in the actual center of the viewpoint where the X and Y lines come together. So we're just going to go into our right panel right here, and we're going to go into our transform or object properties. And under transform, we're going to see these here. To put this in the middle, we're just going to change all of these to zero. So I'm going to do zero, zero, and zero, and that will put all of them to zero. And this, just um, pan with our middle mouse button, press G and Y, or G and Z, sorry, to lift it up here. So that is intersecting our purple plane. Then we're just gonna go ahead and select the purple plane. I am using default, I'm using left click, but for you it'd be right click. I'm using what, right click and for you it'd be left click. But, um, you know, it's the same thing, just for right click. So we just make sure that it's selected here and we're just going to go ahead and move on to our modifiers and that's this wrench icon right here so we're going to add a modifier and the modifier we're going to add is boolean so the boolean modifier is default on difference and we need an object for it to be modified with so you're going to see the dropper tool here we're going to use the dropper tool and select the cylinder good and then we just need to apply and we can delete the cylinder now with X or delete on the keyboard and we have a hole in our mesh or in our plane and we can see the, how the hole operates here good so for the next part we're going to make one more plane and let's make the plane here and let's put just grab this plane with G and we're going to hit X to move on the X axis here and I'm going to press G and Z to push it down underneath. Good, so it's between the plum and the blue planes. Good. So with that now, I'm just going to go ahead and press Z and I'm going to go to wireframe so I can see this a bit better. Good. And we're going to hit G and Y up here. And also, if you want to go to wireframe, you can select in the viewpoint shading here for wireframe. Good. And we're just going to just lift this up a bit so that it covers it a bit more. Good. Next, we're just going to go ahead and select these two, and we're going to subdivide this a couple of times. Good. And we see subdivide comes down here. We have a number of counts. Let's see if we can subdivide this 10 times. Oh, 10 sort of small let's go ahead for 30 right 30 looks good so subdivide it for 30 times good so that we can get a nice smooth wave with this because this is what we're going to apply the wave modifier to so we have this here let's go ahead and apply the wave modifier 
to this so we're gonna go to uh, range icon and we're gonna go to wave so wave modifiers under the form and we're gonna go to wave modifier good so with the wave modifier now if we just pull up our our timeline panel so we can see it and hit space to play we can see that the wave modifier is working but it's not waving in the correct cardinal direction right now it's waving on the z-axis and we don't really want that so if we go to the side here with our middle mouse wheel we can see how it's waving a bit better here and we're going to change that so it's waving along the x-axis so the way that we do that is that we're going to go to r i'm going to hit r and we're going to hit x and 90. good and with that now we're going to go and hit Control and a you can also change the rotation in your object panel here rotation manually here we see that we've changed it to 90. hit shift and then we're going to hit um shift and a this is shift sorry Control and a and that's going to apply the rotation so right now the rotation has its original rotation um if we were to set this to zero this would be the current rotation or the default state rotation for this um plane or this mesh what we want is that we want to just rotate it on the x a 90 and make this position right here the default position of the object right here so when we apply the rotation this will turn to zero and this will be considered the default position of this object right here so we're going to hit shift so control and a and we're going to apply the rotation good so once we apply the rotation now if we rotate it on the x-axis by negative 90 back to what it was and we look we see that the wave modifier using the new origin points or using the new positioning points of the rotation is applying the rotation on the correct um, position of the plane and this is what we need it's applying the wave correctly here but this has the center of the wave in the in the middle of this and also it's waving the whole of the object and we don't want that or the whole of the mesh and we don't want that so what we're going to do we're going to press tab to go into edit mode you can go to edit mode sit down where do you go in edit mode here uh, edit mode up here in your top left object and edit mode but i press tab to go there and then what we're going to do now with our edit mode we're going to go ahead and let me just check something here yeah so in edit mode you know we are going to go ahead and go to our mesh which is this green triangle here with three boxes and we're going to go to vertex groups i'm going to add one and we're going to make sure that in edit mode we have these top vertices selected and we're going to assign good so we can test that they're assigned by deselecting and selecting them and we see that indeed it is assigned it's named as group you know so i think we're just going to leave it as group because we don't have any other vertex groups to distinguish between them you know but in if you're doing something with more vertex groups you may want to name them so now that we have that name group we're going to move on into move back now into our modifier and in the wave modifier we're going to go to vertex group and we're going to select groups this group option that we just created and this way only the top will be affected by the wave modifier good the last thing we want to do is change the starting position it's starting from the center we don't necessarily want that so we're going to go into our add and we're going to add a empty so in the empty now we're going to add a sphere let's scale this down i, might, I prefer spheres to empty so i'm not sure why but this is better to me and easier to find so we're going to put the sphere right here to the left of the of our mesh and that will act as a starting point so if we go back to the wave modifier use our dropper tool and select the empty good we'll see that it is moving from the left hand side which is what we want to imitate the water so next what we're going to do is that we're going to change 
some of these values here so that we have a much smoother wave. Good, so we're just gonna reduce this to 0 0.05, make it a bit slower. In fact, let's make it 0 0.09. Good. I think the wave is good. Um, let's see if we can reduce the width a bit. Good, so reducing the width got me what I really wanted. Good, so the last thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna add shape keys to this. So let's go ahead and press G and Y, let's drag it down a bit. And I'm going to take off the view of this right here. Just gonna take off the modifier for a bit, just um, take off the viewpoint so that we can actually view in the viewport so that we can actually mess about with the mesh in its default state without the wave interfering. I want the mesh plane to be below this circle right here. Good. And uh, baby in the background. I want this mesh here to be in the, uh, right below it. And the shape key is going to take the mesh to the top of this circle right here. So what we're going to do here, just go into our mesh, go into shape keys and we're going to just press it twice. So we have key one and we just want to leave it as key one. This is important and I'll explain why a bit later. So we have it as key one and we're just going to press tab on. Oh, yeah, press tab and we're going to hit G and Y, making sure that all of these top vertices are selected and there wasn't only one selected. And we're just going to pull it up to the top of this. Good. And press tab. So now if we move the value slider, we see it's going to move to the top. Just like this. Awesome. Great. So we have our shape key ready to roll. So we can go ahead to our modifier. And we're going to turn on the modifier in the viewpoint and the render again. Good. And we can see that it's a bit, it's, the wave is still starting, you know, before time, but we're going to sort that out in a bit. So first up, we want to make a duplicate wave. So we're going to hit, we're going to really select you, we're going to hit shift and D to duplicate. Let's go ahead in solid so we can see what's going on. Let's press G and Z to pull this out. And in fact, I'm just going to go into the 3D viewpoint look a bit so that I can see a bit better. So we have a duplicate here. It's hard to see because they're on top of each other. But what we're gonna do, we want to stagger one of these, one of the, we're gonna stagger the duplicate so that it appears at a different point in the wave. So what, to do that now, we're gonna go into the wave modifier of the duplicate and we're gonna go to offset. And offset is going to allow us to stagger the wave so that it starts at a different point so that it looks like we have two flowing um, sources of water going at relatively the same time. I'm just gonna hit G and Z to push this under a bit. Good. And G and Z, let's lift this up. Good, so let's go ahead and color these so that we can tell them apart. We're gonna go into our, um, our material settings, we're gonna set new, Use nodes and we're going to use an emission shader again. And in that emission shader, we're going to use the colors. I think this is the duplicate, C blue, and that is 4860BAFF. Oh, 0BA, sorry. Enter. And yep, yeah, that's the deep sea blue. And for the Caribbean blue, we're going to use the use nodes and the mission sailor once more. And I'm going to select the Caribbean blue. We're going to enter that hex value. And I have five E C B D seven F F. Good. So we have these two waves. Good. And they're looking pretty good here. I think that looks pretty good. Good, so we have our two waves here. Let's go ahead and go to um, press Z and go to wireframe. 
good so we have our two waves successfully here and they are offset it so that they start at different points good so what we want here is that I may I should have set the keyframes to them first but it's okay we'll set these keyframes now now that we have them we just want to have them rise to the top of the circle so they look like they're filling in the circle good so for that we're just gonna go into our shape keys um, for both of them shape keys are set and we're just gonna hit the value we're gonna start it at about let's start them at about 20 frames or so and I'm gonna say insert keyframe and at about frame 90 we're just gonna have the value increase up to the top insert keyframe good so we play it and it fills up nicely and if we put this in our viewpoint view good and this is our 3d view here and then just replay the animation you know we can see that we have a sort of smooth rising here from both of the waves good right now the waves because they're moving in the same direction at the same speed you know they don't quite have the water fill effect that we want so what we're going to do is that for the this wave here it is starting from this empty you know so we're going to go ahead and sort of just mess around with starting point we're going to remove the empty for the starting point and let's play it good and that gives us a sort of interesting effect here you know um, in general you know you can play about with it until you get the sort of effect that you want but I'm gonna stick with this one and in the preview I use a different effect also to get it you can also add the empty to the opposite side and have it go from the opposite direction you know but it's up to you to sort of play with till you get the effect that you want okay but I'm okay with this one so we have our water fill effect right here and it's dampening out nicely good now there is one problem is that when we start the animation we can see that the wave is actually still showing so what I'm going to do to fix that is that I'm going to go to my mesh shape keys and let's press tab to go into edit mode press Z to go to um, wireframe or you can go to wireframe in your top right corner here and I'm just going to increase everything is selected at the top but if it's not selected for you just use your box, box select with B and select all the vertices at the top it's going to say G and Y to move this up a bit on the Y axis let's move it a bit more um, well not so much more about here good and also for the second wave we're going to do the same tab G and Y lift up a bit good so this way I can set the two of these and hit G and Y and just carry it down a bit so that when it rises up it should cover just the same good yeah this looks about right if we check the 3d frame here good we see it rises up together just nicely awesome so we have our water increasing good the height's a bit high too so I'm just gonna adjust the height of both of them you know and like I say this is this is the part where you're going to play about with values you know so you can take your time and sort of play about with the values but this part is pretty much finished put this to 3 and let's put this to 0 0.3 also okay yeah looks good okay good so the next part now is to have the counter so we're gonna go on shift and a and we're going to add a text object you know in the preview I used a special I use a specific font I think it was um, Rubik but for you but for this tutorial we're just gonna use the generic font that comes default with blender I'm going to type 0 and put G and X so let's put here we're gonna go into our text tab in our panel to the right hand side 
and that is this A right here. And the first thing you want to do is that we want to change the paragraph, I think it is, alignment to center. UI. And this is important, and we'll see why in a bit. Good. Then we're going to go collapse this menu here for the paragraph, and we're going to go to Lee Moon Text Counter. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add the driver now. And to do that, we're going to navigate to the text on the Lee Moon Text Counter. And we've already set the suffix, so we're just going to go ahead and go to counter. This is what's going to increase in number, you know, such that when the wave reaches the top, the counter also counts to 100%. And the counter is going to be driven, I'm going to use a driver, and it's going to be driven by the wave shape key value. Uh, if we go into the wave shape key value here, let's go select this wave and go into the value. We notice that this is key one, capital K E Y space one. This is important, we're going to need that. And the value, when it's animating, let's go ahead to timesheet when it's animating the value starts at zero and ends at one so if we were to multiply the zero to one values by a hundred we'd get the percentage so as it rises the percentage will increase until it reaches the top so we're going to drive the text percentage via, via this waves shape key value so if we do that, we're going to go select the text here with the prefix of the percentage. We're going to go ahead and go to counter and we're going to left click for you, right click for me. Um, and we're going to insert the keyframe. Oh, not insert keyframe. We're going to add a driver. Good. And let's just click out of this. And when you add the driver, it turns purple. And now we're going to go to Open Drivers Editor. Let's lift this up. And we see a couple of things here. We see a graph here. And to our right-hand side, we see some values. We're going to edit the values on our right-hand side. And the first thing we're going to do is that we want this to be a scripted expression. So we don't want that to change. Because we're going to use a Python script to um, fuel the driver. We're going to change the expression. We're going to say the variable that's produced is going to be multiplied by a hundred and that's going to give us that percentage value that we want so it's going to multiply the value in the shape key by a hundred and give us give us the percentage the next thing is that we need to find this value find the property or the object that we're going to be using or the mesh you know and where we're going to get that value from so we're going to locate it with these tools here so the first thing you want is we don't want this to be a transform channel. We want this to be a single property. Good. So in the single property now, we define which property it is. And this gives us a list of where we can find our properties. Good. So what we're looking for is mesh because shape keys are in the mesh property. Now that we have that, we need to select which mesh property we want. Good. And what we have to do is that we're going to have to name the wave. So select the wave. And then in your mesh property um, panel, you want to come up here and name your wave. I named it wave one so that we can find it when we're in the driver dialog box here. Good. So I named mine wave one. So we're just going to go ahead and select the text once more and go back to the driver's, proper, driver's um, panel here. And we're going to search. You can also use a the dropper where well, we're going to search for wave one good and then it's going to ask us for the profit for the script that we're going to put for this property that will feed into the variable to be multiplied by 100 so we just need to reference now the shape key and the value of that shape key so first thing is that we have to type and i'll leave this uh i'll link to this in the description and uh, we're going to type in shape underscore keys you're going to use a dot here so shape underscore keys dot keys underscore blocks sorry that's key not keys and this is an array so we're going to open up two square brackets and 
the key blocks we're going to reference to that key frame and the name of the keyframe at the time was key one with the capital K. So that's key, that's K E Y one. Now your keyframe, no, your shape key, sorry, rather, we may have a different name. It may be key zero, it may be key zero or key two or, you know, however you name it, but mine is key one. So you have to look out for that and you have to make the correct um, spelling in accordance to what it's named. And after that, you're just going to have one last dot instance, and we want the value of that key. So we've just referenced this. We're saying shape keys, and in shape keys, we want the key block. And which block do we want? We want key one block, and we want the value of that key one block. Good. So if we go up now, we notice that the is no longer red. And if we look at the text here, we see that the text is representing the, the value position of the wave. Good, so if we bring it down, we see that the text is increasing, bring it up to see the text is decreasing. Good, and we play it. Awesome, it goes up to 100%. Good, and I think this concludes our fluid field infographic tutorial. If you enjoyed the tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. This top this tutorial had quite a bit of bulk to it, but you know it covers a lot of topics. You know, a good start to Blender 2.8. And um, I enjoy doing this tutorial also. Good. And remember I don't know everything, so if you have any other information that you wish to add into the comments, you can go ahead and add that. You know, and I appreciate that and the Client and the comment base appreciates that and this helps everybody grow. You know, be safe for this corona season and until I see you again for another tutorial, get up and design.